The National Veterans Memorial and Museum began with a vision from the late Senator John Glenn, who understood the value of telling and sharing the story of our veterans. From the initial view, the architecture impresses upon visitors the importance of what lies within. Seeming to rise organically from the earth, the building itself is a symbol of our nation's veterans and their resilient spirit and unending commitment to making this country stronger. Once inside the museum, visitors embark on a narrative journey, following exhibitions that focus on the servicemen and women and their families. Individual stories and shared experiences are illustrated through personal artifacts, quotes, letters, photographs, and powerful films of veterans telling their unique story in their own words. The National Veterans Memorial and Museum. It's more than a museum. It's the new home of the brave. Plan your visit today. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Lieutenant General Mike Ferreter, and I'm the President and CEO of the National Veterans Memorial and Museum. And I'm here today with Colonel Donna Whitaker, U.S. Army retired. Uh, I'm I'm a Lieutenant General Fair retired, and uh, and we are super happy to be with you and to bring uh, to you some great programming to celebrate Veterans Day and to celebrate veterans. And at the National Veterans Memorial Museum, uh, the little film you just watched, uh, every day is Veterans Day, and so I arrived there uh, just over two years ago, and we opened the, it in Columbus, Ohio, and. Uh, having completed two years, I'm here to tell you that we are we are open, and we are strong, and we connect and we impact lives, and we tell stories the stories of selfless service and and commitment and comradeship, and so today joined by Donna Whitaker, and um, now Donna and I share a special bond because her awesome son is married to my awesome daughter, and they have three awesome grandbabies who just left studio 708 here so that we could have this but donna welcome it's great to have you thank join you. us and, and i'm so glad you could make time to be with us today thank you so much for having for having me it's i'm an, i'm honored so thank you and so are we so um so i served 35 years and i grew up in a family where my father served and um he retired as a colonel and he served in World War II. And I think we have something else in common. So tell us about your family and growing up uh, as right. well. Right, yeah, well, um, I grew up also in an army family. My father was also a uh, colonel and he's still living, he's 90 years old, um, still living and he lives about a half a mile from, from us. And we love to go over and talk to him about, about um, veteran stuff. Um, but um, so I grew up in an, um, in an army family. I um, married a service member and then I became a service member myself. So I've been an army daughter, an army wife, an army um, service member and an army retiree, and now an army mom as um, our, my oldest son, Garrett, and my daughter-in-law, Mary Whitney, both served, um, both served or are still serving in the army. So. Uh -huh. And Trevor? Oh, and of course we have another son, Trevor, and he served as a combat medic. Um, and yeah, and then got out and went back to um, went back to school using the GI Bill, which is an awesome, an awesome thing. Went back to college. Now this this uh, will be seen um, from coast to coast and north to south, but in particular, we're appealing to where you live. And tell us about that. Yeah, so I live in a retirement community in Central Florida called the Villages, and we think that everybody probably knows somebody who lives in the Villages. So um, currently the villages has 132,000 people who live here. 
And the U.S. Census of this year said from 2010 to 2019, the Villages was the fastest growing metropolitan um, statistical area in the country at 5% a year. And it's grown 5.4% um, a year, the highest, um, the highest, fastest growing. It's a very interesting community because you think of retirees, um, but the average age here in the Villages is 62 for men mm. and C for women. But more importantly than that is um, the amount of veterans who live here in the villages. Currently, it's estimated that 19,370 veterans live here. This is the largest veteran population that's really outside of where a military, uh, where a military base is. And these are veterans who served, of course, in World War II and in Vietnam and in Desert Storm and all of the other wars. Um, you know, so these are veterans from. For, the, for all of the ages. Like my dad didn't serve in World War II, but he did serve in Vietnam and, yeah. and the Korean War. So, yes. So and, it's a and I, would, place. I would imagine that uh, a good number of that 19,000 have a spouse who also um, served as that, that uh, army Absolutely. Spouse, spouse, Air Force spouse as well. Absolutely. Um, also, we are, we're a big golfing community, and um, every, we have 693 holes of golf as of today. Hmm. And um, I, I read a little statistic that I thought was kind of interesting, and that is that um, 1,832 uh, holes in one annually um, in the villages, and that's like five holes of one a day, if you can imagine that. Five holes in one a day. So it's really very very cool. In fact, this week they're having a virtual golf a veterans event where you um, sign up to play and all you have to do is take a picture of your scorecard and your foursome um, and of course enter to enter and then um, they're, all that money is going to local veterans. So it's very cool that they're doing that. A virtual event. I thought that sounded kind of fun. So. Yeah. So if I move to the villages, my chances of a hole in one must be <laughs> I'm not sure that statistically you can say that, but okay. I think okay. the more you play, the more you're going to have a hole, hole in one. How about that? I love it. Um, often we're asking military families, you know, why is it that your father served and then you served and then your kids served? How, how would you answer that question? How did that end up happening? Well, um, so interestingly, um, growing up, I was the youngest of three daughters and both of my sisters wanted to have nothing to do with the military. They didn't like the adventure of moving around at all. Mm -hmm. Like it, they wanted to stay in one place. And both of them actually graduated from college and then moved to a location and stayed there for, right. for the rest of, you know, for, since till now. Um, I did not, I loved the, um, the moving around, the action, meeting the new people. Um, and um, that sense of service, I think, that um, my dad instilled in me and then I tried to instill in my children, um, I think that that kind of follows the lines. We, like your family, we call it our family business, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's un, unlike, like golfers have children who are golfers, you know, and scientists sometimes have children who are scientists. So I think it goes to, um, that same kind of um, scenario. I do too. And, and I've always, you know, told everyone that, that uh, I think our kids see men and women of character. So they're growing up and they see who comes over to your house and who you share time with. And they see these things and they go, and, and, and these are people who are service oriented and also they're having fun in their life. And, right. and they, and they quickly put aside the thought of, how much money I'm going to make in this career versus how many lives I'm probably sure. going to impact or how many teams I'm going to build. And I think that's why uh, it's such a solid family business uh, for so many of us. Wouldn't you agree? And I, I agree. And I also think that um, the friendships that you build, I have to, mm -hmm. my father has had um, friendships. He went to North Georgia college and um, he has still has friends that keep in touch with him from that. So those bonds between uh, military members, I think, are just they're very strong bonds. So mm -hmm. now for everybody at the National Veterans Memorial and Museum, just a little background. You saw in the video that it was the dream and the brainchild of, of the late great Senator Glenn. And there goes a granddaughter. And um, and the great city of Columbus and and titans of business and and uh, the congressional delegation really pulled it all together, and 
they decided, so this is family business. Um, <laughs> they pulled it together. But the thought was, you see the iconic building behind me. Um, and so best of the best so that when veterans see it and feel it, they know they came somewhere special. And then inside, when you come and see us, or if you go online, then again, um, the storytelling is spectacular. They selected from 250, about 25 veterans who tell the story that all of us experienced. A nation called and why I serve and leaving home and the oath of office and basic training. And in each of these alcoves, about eight stories are told by th this crew of veterans from World War II until the current conflict and everything in between from all services. And so we see when people come and visit us or now vi visit us online that they say a couple of things. Wow, you guys got this right. And they say, I wish my dad was here and he could see it. But the one I love the most is when the mom walking behind her dad with her son or daughter, listening to the dad tell stories that he's never told anyone. And she looks back at him and says, he's never told anyone these stories. And yeah. so that's the, um, the power and the impact that, that we have. Yeah. Um, so if you added up the number of homes that you lived in growing up and the number of homes that your, your kids did prior to heading off to college, is the number greater than 10, do you think? Oh, absolutely. It was greater than 10 just as a, as a, um, as a brat, you know, yeah. as an old brat, because um, I think back then they moved a little more frequently than they're trying. They're trying to like settle people a little bit more. Like I had an assignment one time for four years, which my dad never had that. Mm, yeah. right? so I think that they understand the value of keeping, um, I think the army and the air force and the Navy have done a good job of actually uh, seeing the benefit of staying in a place for a little bit longer than two years. So I, I think I was in, you know, 16 or 17 houses um, when my dad was in. Yeah, I tell everyone I moved 18 times before I was 18 years old yeah. one time and then moved our kids likewise. Um, what, what do you, if, if you were talking, so we're often uh, when, we, when we get great folks together, we're, we really are preaching to the choir. So I hope that, our veterans in, in the villages are listening in and I want to thank you for my freedom and thank you for just uh, your service and, uh, and congratulate you on another veterans day. But how would you characterize if you were, I talked to a, a big corporations veterans resource group about an hour ago. And uh, how would you characterize to companies out there? If you hire a vet, what are you getting? Well, um, uh, we, they have a program like that here as well, um, hire, hiring um, veterans. And I, I think what, what you're getting is um, people with varied, diverse experiences. I mean, my experience in the Army was very different than yours, um, but we had to actually adapt um, to things around us and make decisions based on, on what's around us. And we did that every day, you know, and I think that veterans have that capacity to be able to have a lot of things coming at them and be able to still work through and see the focus of what that mission is, the focus and making sure it's going to happen. And I think not everybody has that. Not everybody who doesn't serve um, has that same drive to get the mission done. Yeah, I, uh, that's awesome. So for um, if, if you were telling someone uh, what you see, so we often talk about life after service. And so the career after service, and now you get to see the community of veterans at the villages and life after service and, and the career, and now the what's next. And how would you characterize this group of, of people, 19,000 that uh, yeah. one way or another are, are a part of the super community there? Right. Well, I have a, a couple of kind of cute stories. One is, um, so on my, we have golf carts, by the way, in the villages, everybody drives around in golf carts. So my husband and I ha each have a golf cart. And so um, on my golf cart, it has U.S. Army retired on it. And so when I'm in the golf cart by myself, they say, oh, thank you for your service. You know, I served as well. And, you know, the Korean War, I only stayed in three years, but I wish, I really wish I would have stayed in more. That's what I get every time. I wish I would have stayed in more. 
They see right. that they saw the value of service. Um, but when my husband and I are in the golf cart together, they never ask me, um, are you the United States Army retired? They always ask him. And it's, it's his response is always um, awesome because he's an awesome husband. And that is, no, it wasn't me. It was her. But of course, he served as well, because I think for Veterans Day, mm -hmm. um, I think veterans families are really, um, I think that um, non-veterans focus on veterans for Veterans Day, but I also think veterans focus on veterans families because they sacrifice so much to make sure that their veterans are successful. Yeah, and so thanks to all the family members out there as well. And and often, um, as was the case of my younger brother, you know, we came out of Berlin and, and he was he was probably seven years old. And we lived at Lake Tahoe and then Carmel and he went to Santa Barbara, you know, UC Santa Barbara, and then he went into Hollywood and all that. And he would say, you know, I'm I'm an army brat, but not like, you know, you and certainly not like my olders. Um, nevertheless, the character and the creativity and the, you know, roll your socks up with the smiles facing up in your sock drawer. Right. Um, <laughs> So um, we are the National Veterans Memorial Museum, and, and you've been here. Uh, I have. A beautiful building and a beautiful display of uh, veterans and their stories. It's incredible. I, everybody needs to go. If they're near Columbus, you need to try to find a way to get there. So. Let me tell a little bit of a story for our audience that on March 13th, uh, my leadership team came to me and said, hey, we're gonna, boss, we're going to need to close. COVID's going to be very bad. And we decided that we would uh, close the door to walk in traffic, but that instead we would create online and digital programming. And uh, so just like this program, which will probably be seen by up to 5,000 people in, uh, in the next couple of weeks. And uh, we did Victory Japan Day and, and uh, Vietnam uh, Memorial Day and the end of World War II day and uh, Memorial Day itself. And and uh, we would project this out. And we found that that uh, where we might have had 300 people, we were getting this 3000 and 4000. And to date now, um, we have reached 1.8 million households during. Wow, COVID. that's awesome. And then I asked the team to to pivot and be agile and, and my great team did. And we now this week we launch and virtual field trips. So we have two field trips on Friday here in the city of Columbus, Ohio. But then within a week, uh, Parker's first grade class, our co-grandson um, from Monterey, California, will have a field trip to the NVMM. Isn't that great? great? And then That's great, it, yeah. It, it's really cool. And then likewise, um, my sister Pat's grandson is a fifth grader in Sacramento and then they'll have a field trip. So our aim is to be able to take the, the great story of veterans, integrity, character, courage, and, and fulfill those pillars um, to honor, connect, inspire, and educate, to bring that across the nation. And we're being very successful with that, very successful with veteran voices, very successful with, with key, key dates, um, of which I think the United States Marine Corps has a key date today called their birthday. So Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Marines. Yeah. So for us, all of this is really super. Tell tell our audience what touched you um, about walking through the museum and the Memorial Grove. Well, I think we've talked about this. When I retired initially, I, um, I wanted to start a, a website and a kind of a, a uh, opportunity for veterans to tell their stories, but not just the veterans, the veterans' families, the veterans' um, parents, the veterans' children. Um, and I called it Life in Camouflage. And it was a 360 degree uh, look at life in the military. And um, of course, I wasn't didn't have the clear vision that um, Senator Glenn had or the resources or anything to be able to to kind of um, show that. So I was so impressed that I was able to see kind of something that I thought was a very important thing and that's getting the stories out, the individual stories of veterans. I mean, 
the veterans as a group is what we celebrate today, Veterans Day, all of veterans, whether you served one year or five years or, or 10 years or 34 years. Um, but these individual stories is really what touches um, our lives of um, hardship, but also of happiness, you know, and joy and the things that they actually learned um, being veterans. So I was just um, blown away with it. And I think your virtual uh, field trip idea would actually be great. Um, in the villages, we have uh, 2,400 organizations, 2,400 organizations where people get together and based on sports or based on, and there's 21 veteran related um, clubs here in the villages. Yeah. 21. Um, we have a, a chapter of the honor flight and they're doing flightless, um, flightless, um, you know, tours now with the museums, um, the um, World War II Museum or the Korean War Museum or the um, Veteran um, Vietnam Museum. And so this could be another one that they could actually do is actually offer clubs that ability to do a virtual of um, the National Veterans Memorial. Um, so I, I believe strongly, Donna, about that when when I was interviewed and uh, for the job, I said, you know, your investment in this iconic building and the, everything oh, it's is just awesome. And then I told them, but it's insufficient to our need. And they said, wait a minute, we just, <laughs> into this. and I said, well, you did, you did great. But if you're in, in a vet's home and I like to say Tampa or Tacoma, you're not going to probably get to Columbus, Ohio. So this year we will field the virtual field trip and also virtual tours. And so those tours, We'll reach out to uh, those clubs and uh, and um, allow uh, that should allow us to to have them have a great experience. Um, we're also working with the Gary Sneeze Foundation now to, oh. to create uh, he called I think it's soaring. Um, he's got a program and we'll bring two or three plane loads of of. Uh, our Korean War veterans and the real target is our Vietnam veterans here to Columbus, Ohio, and they'll, you know, travel, have a night, have a uh, dinner that honors them right. and into the museum. In the meantime, everything we can think of, uh, we can we can make it virtual, and that's where we're going with that next. Yeah, Gary Sinise, what um, he or he opened his first chapter of the Gary Sinise Foundation in Orlando uh, mm -hmm. just a month ago, the first chapter. Um, what an incredible story. I don't know if you've read his book. It's just um, an incredible uh, incredible um, story of his life and his uh, sacrifice and his, for veterans, everything is, he's done, it's incredible. So. Great. Well, we, we you know, um, we find that some 501c3 want to protect their grants. So they, they build a castle wall. And then we find some that, that really never lost sight of why they're doing what they do. And, and certainly he is one of those and, and his foundation and, and uh, the chairman of his foundation um, board is, is Vince Brooks, General Vince Brooks, a friend of all of ours. And so together, everyone can accomplish more. Absolutely. Like and that's what he says. That's, you know, yeah. to do more together. Yes, yeah. right. exactly. So um, a couple of things you can see in the clouds behind my head that um, membership will drive our mission. And so I'd like to kind of call to action everybody to uh, to come to our website and to get in touch. We're going we're gonna to bring this to you and bring opportunity to you. Um, you'll see a banner show up in just a second. And uh, what we really want to do is go to nationalvmm.org slash join because though we are the one and only, and we are the national, and we are the Veterans Memorial Museum, we, we receive not a penny of funding from the federal government, from the state of Ohio, from anyone else. And so it's my great team members and my friends that uh, are out there uh, saying, you know what, we can impact more lives by way of the programming, and the programming can be sponsored by, by someone who says, hey, I'll, I'll pitch in and pay for six months of those field trips or those uh, those uh, virtual tours, or I'll just be a, man, a member. Let me let me join and then I'll get involved. And one of the things we find from our, our uh, retirees and our volunteers is 
not all of them are just docents who uh, carry you through the museum in a spectacular way. A lot of them are marketers or, or merchandisers sure. or, you know, every, and so if you want to volunteer, even at distance, um, Megan Ferreter would call it crowdsourcing, of course, uh, from her <laughs> life. But, uh, you can get involved in that way um, as well. And um, I, I'm being uh, nudged by a great Sarah Sutton. <laughs> Donna, tell us, tell us uh, why you became a member. Uh, well, um, initially, to be perfectly honest, I came, uh, you invited us to come to the opening, the grand opening, and I saw it as an opportunity to, um, you know, to number one, see you guys and see the family and see the museum. Um, but now it's not about that anymore. It's about really um, your, your, the, the message of veterans' voices and um, talking about veterans' um, lives and their experiences. And um, it's really kept me as a member. So, um, and I, um, I just encourage everybody um, to go to the website and really um, look at the museum Man, I don't know. You have a virtual tour now on the website? Or? We do. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. Go in and see. First off, the building, the, the building itself outside is spectacular, but the um, the stuff that's inside, it's really incredible. It really is, um, you know, heartwarming and makes you feel good. But um, everybody should join, um, um, should join so that they can actually take advantage of all those things. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, we're, so I told you we're creating a virtual um, field trip and I told you that we're creating a virtual um, you know uh, tour we're also creating a virtual exhibit hall and so all the time someone comes to us and they say this is my granddad <laughs> stuff. and we want to put it in a museum well um, this is our chance to create we'll digitize take pictures even allow any of you out there to tell the story of your life as a veteran or your life as a spouse to a veteran, or as Donna said, an army mom, you know, an army daughter, um, a soldier. Um, and, and then you can, you can tell everyone in your family, Hey, go to the national veterans war museum, go to the virtual exhibit hall and just type in, you know, Whitaker and you're going to see the story of granddad and his stuff. So that's also being fielded as well. And so that's, yeah, 2021 that's great. is going to be an awesome year for us. Um, we're also going to have a Vetrepreneur store. So we have these, those four things that we discussed, but I invite you to get involved first. Um, we have, we have dozens now of amazing programs like this veteran voices, virtual rally point that are in the website and uh, in our Facebook uh, page as well. And so I, I invite everyone to come to see it, to understand better, to offer us your great ideas and what else you want done. As Donna said, hey, I've got this idea. Look, we're easy. If it's a great idea and it takes care of veterans, we'll adopt it. And uh, and then um, and we'll we'll make someone feel great. So, Donna, it, what would in summary, what would you say about life as, you know, an army mom? Um, a colonel, uh, a life of service, uh, having a great spouse in Tom, uh, grandchildren, um, and being being a veteran on Veterans Day. Well, I think that um, it really comes back to our country and um, the freedoms that we have are like no other. And if you want to protect those freedoms and the the liberty, um, you some but some people have to sacrifice. And I think that. Um, I was so happy to serve um, and so happy um, to be a, the daughter of a service member and very proud of um, Garrett and Mary Whitney and their service and Trevor. Um, so um, I just think that um, that it is really, uh, um, well, I think it's really good now that people are recognizing veterans um, and um, lifting them up. And because I know that all the time it wasn't like that. And so I think that um, having programs like this really helps uh, show um, America, you know, really what veterans are about. And I think, um, you know, we didn't ask really for a day to celebrate us. And sometimes, um, sometimes I, I get a little embarrassed when people say, oh, thank you for your service, you know, and I want to always say back to them, no, thank you for your support. Yeah. Because um, that support really means everything. And I think that's, 
Veterans Day is kind of what that means to me, is really thanking everybody else for their support. So I want to thank you for spending time with us today and, and helping to tell the story yes, of great. your life, your family, and, and your service to our country. And so thank you for my freedom and thank you for your service. And, uh, and thank you, everybody out there. Uh, what you do and how you touch lives is important. Join us in one way or the other. And for sure, uh, we're going to make a difference. God bless you all. Happy Veterans Day. And we look forward to seeing you virtually or in person as soon as possible. And Donna, and, I'll, let you, I'll let you close us out. Well, I think that um, you guys should uh, have an actual field trip to come down to the villages, right? An actual field trip, not just a virtual one, to come and um, help that. spread the word. Okay, great. Well, happy right. Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. My pleasure. Okay, goodbye, everyone. Right. Thank you. God bless. Bye. God bless America. Wars aren't fought by countries, they're fought by people. Now, hear their stories in their own words. Honor their service in your own way. At the only museum in America that gives a voice to all our veterans. The National Veterans Memorial and Museum. It's more than a museum. It's the new home of the brave.